The Crucible is a play. It's written by Arthur Miller. He wrote it in the 1950s to pretty much show a parallel between the Salem witchcraft trials and McCarthyism, which he was pretty much a victim of uh, when he was alive. And uh, so The Crucible is all about the Salem witchcraft trials. It details uh, the events that occurred in Salem in 1692 in Massachusetts. And uh, pretty much the play is all about a parallel between what happened back then in the 1950s. One of the universal themes in the plays, uh, in Miller's play, deals with uh, the idea of rumors. And I, I think, if anything, teenagers today, teenagers 10 years ago, teenagers 30 years ago, can relate to the ideas of rumors and how they can affect a society. It's really what the play's about, and that's truly what students are dealing with today. The assignment was for students to uh, analyze and answer the question, how does mass hysteria occur in society today? As with any uh, PBL assignment, project-based learning assignment, one of the uh, best things you can do is create an entry event. And for students and to create some type of assignment, some type of lesson in which you can introduce the project and get students interested in the idea. And so what I did was I, uh, they took their quarterly assessment the day before I introduced the project and I told them the day after, I said, I saw or a teacher came in after you took your exam and said that she saw some of you, your eyes were wandering and you were cheating. Friday at the end of class while you guys were uh, strolling out, Another teacher came in and told me that she saw some of you cheating on your quarterly on Friday, your quarterly assessment. I want to know who. Nobody comes forward. I'm giving you all an F on your quarterly. I will sit here all week in silence until somebody comes forward. I'm not taking an app on my freaking mid or whoever did it, you can confess because that's bull crap. I freaking sat here and studied and everything and then you guys cheat and now we're all going to be in trouble, so. Either of that, or if Mr. Greyhouse says I can't do that, I will give you an essay test. Isn't that 20% on Yep. Really? Someone freaking confess! How did I just try to instill mass panic in the classroom? Oh my god! I can't believe it! Wow! <laughs> From there, uh, I started the lesson. I said, all right, that's one way in which I instilled mass panic in you. Now you come up with some ways. And their goal was to create a five-minute presentation, up to five minutes in length. They needed to appeal to freshmen. That's exactly who I wanted them to present to. I had as I planned the project, I wanted them to, I had it set up where they could uh, present to a freshman class. The first one was uh, presenting findings in a, you know, or, or information in a presentation for an audience. Uh, that's one of the first ones, which was speaking with scene skills. Uh, another one is using digital media to enhance the presentation. One of the things I, I required in the project is they had to create a video. And I did that deliberately because I wanted them to use the iPad to create a product. They've been using this, uh, the technology. Some of them have been using the iPad in class for two years now in their English classes. And I wanted to see if they could create something that was authentic, something that was interesting and looked professional. Uh, another area of digital media to enhance presentation is I allowed them to use their iPad as they were speaking. It's one of the first times in which I've uh, allowed students to do this because I've been so afraid that you know, that's going to break. And I told them they can use the notes function in the iPad, jot down some notes, I asked them to please do not read to their audience, and uh, it, it was interesting to see them use the actual media as they were speaking because you know, normally we say we're using it. <laughs> Developing and implementing short and sustained research projects, this is one of the common core standards that I'm really excited about because now, as English teachers, we usually have one main research paper each quarter. And it seems like every single year, students forget, oh, how do you cite a book again? Or how do you uh, do an in-text citation? Or how do you uh, complete one? And you know, through short and, res or short and sustained research projects, students are able to remember those skills. And so I did require a works cited page uh, 
where they cited everything that they, finished where they got their information and uh, any videos that they used or uh, used during the presentation. And then the final one relates to literature, determining a theme in the text and uh, connecting it to today. Uh, one of the common core standards does ask to analyze themes, and so one of the main things we talked about through the Crucible is mass hysteria, and so that's one of the ideas that they had in mind. And uh, I really wanted them, and I think one of the great aspects of PBL and the Common Core, and as an English teacher, is if you just find a theme in literature, in any literary piece, that could be the jumping or launching pad for a PBL project. You know, racism in Huck Finn. That could be a launching pad for uh, a PBL project. So I like the fact that, you know, by incorporating themes in literature, students are able to see ah, uh, here's why the text is read today. It's not just Mr. Gillespie is giving me some boring old dusty book to read. It's, it's still relevant today. Yes, it, it, the, the iPad and through Apple TV, it does allow students to get a visual. And one of the things that I, I'm trying to eliminate is the worksheet in my classroom. Instead of uh, understanding John Proctor, instead of, you know, answering questions on a worksheet, you know, why don't you make a movie? And why don't you try to visualize him and find pictures to try to help yourself understand what he might look like and you know, what he might be. And I think there's more analysis in there versus let's look at John Proctor uh, in the movie version. So I, I think that the iPad can help with creativity and the imagination and helping, not, not helping, but forcing students to actually think about, all right, what does this character look like? You go back in the text and try to figure it out and you know, see exactly what's going on in their head and see the official representation of what they're thinking. There are a multitude of uh, reactions. That I, uh, I see quite a few in every class. There are some where they get frustrated easily and they say, I hate this, I do not want to have my own next year. You know, curse technology. Uh, and then, uh, but I noticed with those students, once they're creating something, once they're, once they're doing something that they've never done before. They, they start to take pride in what they're doing, and they start to take ownership. And I think that's really interesting to see. I think it's, uh, just, it's a brand new dynamic to the classroom because, you know, quite frankly, and I'm guilty of giving worksheets as well, uh, I think that when you give a worksheet for students to complete, there's no pride in their knowledge. They're, they're, not under, they're understanding what they're doing, but th there's no, there's no sense of emotional at all. With the technology, students are able to post everything and any, anything on the web. I mean, it's pretty much a great thing that the iPad can do. And so, as a result of publishing the work online, I wanted students to see that they can also speak to a different type of audience. I want students to be able to speak and to write and to communicate with people other than me. Because when they write essays, if they're writing them you know, directly to me, there's not going to be as much effort in all of them to give me a great product versus, all right, the world is going to see this or another class is going to see this. It, it, it motivates them a little bit more. It, yes, it, it creates their own hysteria within them. Some were freaking out right uh, before they presented, but there's, there's, for lack of a better word, there's more to lose. And I think because of that, they want to do well and they care about doing well. And I think that's my job. I think one of the biggest advantages of project-based learning is it can help students develop a deeper connection. They can understand how and why we're doing things in class, why we are reading the Crucible. I don't need to answer that question because mm -hmm. they see that as they're completing their project. And I never received that question in my class uh, while reading that play. Um, another aspect of project-based learning is, and this is something to adjust to, is the students are in control of their own learning. You know, I have standards, citing your work, making sure you have outside sources, presenting your findings, and I can ensure that those standards are hit, but for the most part, they're on their own, and I'm not really a teacher anymore, I'm a coach. And so as they're working, I can see what they're doing, and I can look at exactly what they're thinking about presenting on and listen to them and then from there I give my feedback and they can either take it or they don't have to take it. It's their presentation. So there's more ownership in their learning. I, I'm, they're teaching or I'm teaching and they're learning life lessons. Uh, they're working together in a group and they're taking more ownership in their 
learning. They're taking more ownership in their products that they create. And I think that's more valuable than any worksheet, any test, any multiple choice standardized, that was pretty pointed, but um, any worksheet could really offer.